Intermodal shipping exploded in the late 80s and early 90s, and the product of this was the double stack well car. Rail manufacturers were concerned with stability, such that Thrall experimented with a new truck design that moved the weight of the car body and containers from a center pin bolster design to a dual leaf spring suspension. Thrall developed this hoping to revolutionize the well car design, but only made a small run of 75 units and continued production on more standard well car designs. The product of this was the Thrall TFW10 well car design. Class 1 Model Works announced the well car in July of 2022, and only 8 short months later, these cars were delivered to dealers. This is a brand new release from Class 1 Model Works, and this inaugural release includes 3 paint schemes for TTX with 10 total road numbers. The MSRP is $71.99, but a slight discount is available directly or from third-party retailers. The model that we will be taking a look at today is DTTX 54050, one of the two numbers offered in the late 2005 fitted with the Heritage TTX logo. Checking out the B end of the car first, up on the top of the deck, the end of the car has a lot of separately applied plastic brake linkage detail. This linkage detail translates the brake chain movement down to the trucks on the prototype. One of the most stand-up features on either end of the car body sides is the several examples of the etched metal walkways. These walkways are similar to the Morton design with the smaller circular holes stamped into the metal. On either side of that center walkway are two holes drilled into the top deck. These are actually access holes for the prototype crews to conduct inspections on the truck as well as brake maintenance. At the end of the car, the BN does have this separately applied brake wheel and brake wheel assembly that is attached to the car body side. This is a separately applied plastic detail with good brake wheel detail and molded on chains that run down to the brake linkage. Over on the car body sides are more of these standard freight car details like these separately applied wire grab irons that are attached to the car body sides as well as the separately applied coupler cup bar with the wire cup bar running from the attachment point to just under the coupler. And speaking of the coupler, we do have a new design from Class 1 Model Works using a standard metal coupler. This coupler is quite a bit larger than the scale couplers and is similar to a KD number no. 5, but does have good rib detail on the coupler body. And finally, the B end is rounded out with the separately applied detail of the trainline air hose. This hose is molded in a black plastic and does have a silver metallic accent painting on the glad hands as well as the angle cock handle. The sides of the car body also have pretty good details as well. Towards the end of the cars are more of the plastic separately applied side ladders. The side ladders and stirrup steps are molded in one piece in a yellow shade slightly darker than the car body paint. Next to the side ladders is the looping ring and jacking pads. This component is another separately applied plastic component in a similar yellow shade to the side ladders. Running down the length of the car is several plumbing details as well. Down the one side is a single plastic detail line. This is going to be your brake linkage running between the two car body ends. And on the other car body side is two smaller air plumbing details providing the train line air. The lower portion of the skirting does have some good details as well. One of these separately applied metal details is the skirt stiffeners. These are a brass detail attached to the metal car body and provide extra strength on the skirting for the prototype. Another structural strength piece on the prototype is the triangular members on the skirting. These are represented well on the model with the subtle thickness variations in the diecast car body. Translating the container weight to the car body are the support posts along the sides. These posts are located at different points where the container hard points would be found. The major ones on this car are at the 40 foot container edges as well as the center where two 20 foot containers would sit. Similar to the side ladders, these are separately applied plastic details that's molded in a slightly darker shade than the car body paint. Finally, one smaller detail to search for is the small ACI tag that's found on the box beam. These smaller plastic details are located on opposite corner beams and are painted in a silver metallic paint. Moving over to the spaghetti bowl of the A end of the car, one of the smaller separately applied details is the IBC box that is attached to the side frame. These are the smaller inner box connector details in the box and have the inner box connectors inside the box as well. The A end of the car is the majority of the braking details as well. The largest of these is the air receiver located between the etched metal walkways. Next to the receiver is the brake piston. The piston is attached to more plastic chain and structural iron that is eventually connected to the brake linkage. On the other side of the walkways near the IBC box is the retainer valve on the edge of the car body. The triple valve is next to the retainer valve and other braking details like the cutout rod are near the triple valve. All the various braking components are attached via the air plumbing details. 
These are very nicely done with the use of brass wire to represent the air lines. There are several uses of angle iron as well to support the airlines to really heighten the detail level on the A end of the car. Looking down into the well of the car, there's a few details to check out as well. One of these is more of the operational aspect, and that is the container pinholes to accept the C-Vans. The cross members and axis holes also have good detail and definition with the correct orientation and placement of the structural members. Up on the sides of the well are the container guide members. These ensure the containers align into the well car for loading. These pieces are separately applied plastic details molded in that darker yellow shade. There's two on each side of the well for a total of eight guide members. Flipping the car over gives a chance to check out the harder to see details. These custom built trucks were cast by Thrall just for the TWF-10. These wagon union trucks are a bit shorter than the normal trucks sporting a shorter wheelbase, almost like a narrow gauge truck. The trucks are fitted with 33 inch metal wheels and the car is fitted with the animated roller bearing caps. Under the trucks are the leaf spring details. Since the trucks are single cast pieces, they don't utilize springs on the bolster. Instead, the dampening action is used from the leaf springs above the truck. The leaf spring details can really only be seen when the car is flipped over and the truck is removed. The well car allows containers to fit either from a 40 foot or two 20 foot containers to fit nicely into the well. The lower well will fit 40, 45, or 48 foot variations in any size up top. And the top can support 53 foot containers without any overhang. I have tried several manufacturers containers of varying lengths and didn't have any fitting issues with the well car. The containers that were tested included Walther's, Scale Trains, Athern, and Atlas. The car body length of the well car was 9 and a quarter inches long, so the NRA recommended weight would be 5.62 ounces or 159 grams. The model actually weighed 4.39 ounces, so a difference of 1.23 ounces to the lighter side. When you add two containers to the model, that brings the weight to 6.47 ounces, so the addition of one or two containers would bring this car up to NMRA recommended weight. All the wheels were found to be in gauge, and when comparing the coupler heights to the KD height gauge, it was found that both cars had one slightly low coupler. For the scoring section of the review, the score will be broken down into several categories, each with its own point totals, adding up to 100 possible points. The packaging of the model is a new twist with a crate style box that opens to a plastic window. The model is shipped in a hard plastic blister pack and a soft plastic liner. The model didn't include any information or warranty details and nothing is available online. The accuracy of the model seems to be pretty great. A low production model with only a few surviving examples doesn't leave a lot of photographic evidence, but class one videos did seem to show a very accurate model based off their videos. The paint on the model is pretty fair. The overall base color lays flat and doesn't obscure any details. This late version features the TTX patch logo and the decals are nicely done as well. There are several smaller blemishes across the model, enough that it was difficult to find a perfect photo angle. Several details are also super glued resulting in the paint whitening. I didn't love that most of the fine details were molded in a dark yellow from the car body, so it seems that every little aspect of the car is slightly different colors. This would be fixed with weathering, but is just less than ideal on a model this expensive. The details on the model are very well executed, and everything you could really think of of being on a car is there, and it's all very nicely done. It's really a strong showing out of Class 1 Model Works, and I didn't really expect this much detail executed so well. That being said, at this $72 price point, perfection is expected, and there's two slight issues I notice. The first of these is that the interior well has quite a few holes. This is going to be difficult to patch, and these are the holes are different than your container locator pins, and these are located on the side well. It's just going to be pretty annoying to patch all the holes, sand it, and then paint over it. And the other small issue I notice is that there's a lot of plastic components that were just cut from the sprues that weren't freshly cut. It's going to require me to go back and trim quite a bit of these plastic details. The operations of the car is actually pretty good. The wagon union trucks perform nicely without the use of weights from containers. And I was able to run this at the head end of a 20 car well car train. It didn't have any sort of derailment issues or any other issues with the car. I'm not going to take off any points for the low weight just because these cars are very small and there's absolutely nowhere to add weight without compromising the proportions from the prototype. I will say that the smaller wheelbase trucks are quite a bit less forgiving on imperfect track and they were pretty good at finding derailments. I would chalk this up to more of my poor track laying abilities than the fault of the car, but just something to keep in mind when operating this piece of equipment. 
The couplers, trucks, and wheels are all fairly well done. The trucks are, once again, those wagon union built small wheelbase trucks that were a single cast piece and look very nice. The metal wheels are pretty standard with the rotating roller bearing caps on the axle end. And finally, the Class 1 brand couplers did fairly okay. One of them was low on both cars that I ordered and in the standard size when really a car at this price point should have this scale couplers. Another side note on the couplers is that they trim the magnetic trip pins for these. And personally, I don't really care, but some people may not like that. I generally trim the magnetic trip pins myself, but it's easier to have the user end trim them. And if they don't want them, then to deliver the car without the trims and kind of force the end user to not have them at all. The value of the model is always subjective, but this car is rather expensive coming in at $72 MSRP. And when you generally can find budget three unit wall car sets for $75 to $95, the expectation is pretty high. I will say that this car performs well and has a great number of details, but overall I felt that it should get about an 8 out of 10 just for all the shortcomings. And finally, for the miscellaneous section, just to touch on it once again, this is a very nice model, very expensive with a few shortcomings. I will say that one of my cars arrived with a grab iron missing. I found it in the box, and that's easily a re-gluable piece. And on the other car, it had a broken edged metal platform, another easy fix, but it was just also missing another one. So I'm going to have to contact Class 1 Model Works into getting a replacement. And that's really just on these very detailed models. There's some sort of expectation that these highly detailed cars are going to be more difficult to transport. And you should not be surprised by some minor breakage. But any missing parts is pretty unacceptable. Tailing up all the points gives an 88 out of 100 or a solid B plus rating. And when comparing this model to other recently reviewed models, the Class 1 Model Works TWF10 well car ends up just under halfway down the list but still a pretty good showing for their first model that they have brought to market. In the end, I thought this car is very nicely detailed and runs great, really what you should expect from a very premium model, and I thought that they really brought up with a lot of details, especially on a car that's relatively uncommon, and there's only a few examples left in the wild. I feel pretty happy about my purchase. I really love that these cars have a different look with the side skirting, and in a line of other well cars, these cars are easily recognizable. That being said, I think these cars did have some slight issues that will hopefully be fixed for the next run. I think once they iron out some of the smaller paint issues and the assembly of the details, and really they're going to have something special here. I know Class 1 is working on their depressed flat car, and after the release of this car, I am more excited about the flat car after seeing the initial detail and quality of the cars they're able to produce, despite their shortcomings. But that's all I got for you guys this time. Tell me what you guys think about these models. I know they're pretty funky, and I think they are pretty sharp, though. And in consist of other well cars, I definitely think they've earned their battleship name. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about these cars. They're definitely pretty interesting, and they're not everyone's cup of tea. But I'm very excited for this new manufacturer of Class 1 Model Works, and I'm excited to see what they're able to produce in the future. But comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.